The purpose of our next session is to touch briefly uh, on the critically important issue about how the Office for Students and UK Research and Innovation uh, will be working closely together in the future to ensure coherence in our approach to regulation and funding. A commitment to collaboration between the two bodies was given by the government during the passage of the Higher Education and Research Bill. That collaboration is now reflected in specific sections of the Act, which deal with information sharing, collaboration, and joint working between UKRI and OFS. But far more importantly than that, it's collaboration that both organizations are absolutely committed to anyway, regardless of the Act. I think it's fair to say that both of us are acutely aware that the impact that higher education institutions have up and down the country rely in large part on the effective interplay between teaching and research. In his essay, The Poetics of Music, by Igor Stravinsky, and I should say at this point it's total coincidence that mo my, both Michael and I are quoting from uh, Russian artists. Uh, Stravinsky said, the more constraints one imposes, the more one frees oneself, and the arbitrariness of the constraint serves only to obtain precision of execution. The creation of OFS and UKRI was certainly not arbitrary, but the consequent division of responsibilities between teaching and research could be if we let it. But we will not let it, as I said, not only because it is a requirement of the legislation, but I think it is precisely by having to make sense of our relationship that we could end up with something far stronger, far more thought through and more clearly articulated in Stravinsky's words, than we had perhaps before. So working together, we can jointly make a clear and compelling articulation of the case for, for instance, research-informed teaching, teaching-informed research, postgraduate research careers, the case for a high skills talent pipeline that informs the strength of our research base, and place-based responses to economic growth and social and cultural prosperity, prosperity. But precisely because we now have the constraints of our separate existences, we will focus our efforts because we have to. And to use Stravinsky's words again, we will obtain precision of execution and impact. OFS and UKRI are currently already working closely together to draw up a memorandum of understanding that covers how we will share data coordinate on regulation, on infrastructure, and so much more. It's collaboration that we're committed to taking forward. And in that spirit of collaboration, I'm absolutely delighted to welcome here today Professor Sir Mark Walport, Chief Executive of UKRI, to say a few words. By way of introduction, Mark's been Chief Executive of UKRI since September 2017, having previously worked as Government Chief Scientific Advisor and Head of the Government Office for Science from April 2013 to September 2017. Mark, we're absolutely delighted to welcome you here today. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much indeed, Nicola, and I'm delighted to be here. Um, so I think that everyone would agree that the UK is a world-leading country in research and innovation. And frankly, we can't have world-leading research and innovation if we don't have world-leading education. Um, and uh, frankly, you can't have the best education system without research and innovation as an integral and closely linked partner. So uh, there's no doubt about the importance of UK research and innovation working closely with uh, the Office for Students, and we're completely committed to doing that. And we share many priorities with you. We both want our world-leading university system to continue to grow from strength to strength. Our universities generate and sustain huge value for individuals, the people that they educate, for cities, for regions, for the economy, and for society and its culture, both nationally and globally. We both want to see a sustained progression 
of skilled and talented people throughout higher education and into research and the wider workforce. And we want to see a dynamic system that enables the best to succeed. Uh, we both want to see and ensure that block grant public investment into universities is flexible enough to enable them to meet their strategic needs, but also pinned, underpinned by strong accountability and assurance. And I think we both recognize the role that universities play in knowledge exchange, uh, connecting with their local partners, with national partners, to generate impact from their research and educational activities for the benefit of the wider economy and of society. But I think it's also important to recognize that we have quite explicit legal responsibilities to work together and importantly to share information with each other. And also there is very considerable strength of feeling among our stakeholder communities about the importance of joining up across the education and research agendas, which are very tightly knit together in many universities. Um, now, we recognize, I think, that not everything will be resolved immediately, uh, but we're absolutely committed to ongoing dialogue between uh, UK Research and Innovation and the Office for Students. Um, and of course, Research England will play a very specific role in ensuring that any issues that arise from the split of Hefke are resolved quickly and sensibly. And we know that there's considerable goodwill in all parts of Hefke to continue with productive professional relationships with their former colleagues in Bristol after the split. Um, as UK Research and Innovation is responsible for investing across the UK, and I think this is an important point, we'll also be engaging with the higher education funding bodies in the devolved nations. So on regulation, we care about the financial sustainability of the universities that receive our funding. Uh, this is because we need to know that when we invest in research and innovation, we're making sound investments that can generate long-term benefits that we all seek. And we will be significantly reliant on the Office for Students in monitoring the financial sustainability, the governance and the management of universities in England. Uh, we recognize that their overarching focus is on how regulation can best meet the needs of students. And we can see benefits to that in terms of protecting the interests of postgraduate research students in particular. But of course, both bodies have a responsibility to ensure that the funding they provide is being spent with regard to regularity, propriety, and value for money. And we see opportunities to work with OFS to deliver effective and proportionate regulation that makes sense for providers and delivers for all of us as taxpayers. Now, the higher education sector has been going through a period of considerable change, and we believe that the creation of UK research and innovation will significantly reduce complexity for universities. We're going from nine bodies uh, down to one, and we're determined to seize the opportunities to make the whole greater than the sum of the parts. Um, and as part of that, we must ensure that UK Research and Innovation and the Office of Students work jointly on minimizing the burden and duplication and ensuring a coherent system, system of funding and regulation for English universities. And we'll do this through effective data sharing and intelligence sharing to ensure wherever possible that higher education providers have single conversations and make data returns once, not twice. On skills, the success of our research and innovation system, as I've already said in my introductory remarks, is entirely dependent on the skills and talents of individuals. A major source of this talent is higher education itself which equips people with the knowledge, with the skills, with the understanding that enable them to flourish in postgraduate study and research careers where that's their aim. This ensures the long-term sustainability of our research base and it also provides the vital human capital that helps grow our knowledge economy and advance our global competitiveness as a nation. So UK Research and Innovation will have the overall responsibility for the health and vitality of the research base ensuring that the UK remains world leading in developing new knowledge and applying it to real world problems. This includes overseeing the pipeline of research and innovation talent to ensure that it's meeting the needs of research disciplines, research organizations, employers, and society at large. 
Uh, we will be responsible for the funds that research councils currently distribute for doctoral studies. Um, we'll also be responsible for all research funding which is currently distributed by HEFKE in England, including quality related research funding, which has an element that supports the provision for doctoral students in England. Uh, we intend to work with OFS to develop a common understanding of the technical and academic skill needs of the economy and the health of provision to meet these, uh, both now and looking to a very different future. This includes jointly examining how our shared array of regulatory and funding instruments might be used to ensure those needs are met by universities and the higher education system as a whole. On knowledge exchange, which is an extremely important activity of higher education, we absolutely understand the importance of this in supporting both local and national prosperity. It's a core mission for all our universities, working through both research and teaching in partnership with business, with government, and with third sector bodies. UK Research Innovation will take the lead on knowledge exchange, bringing together the activities that are undertaken across all of the research councils, Innovate UK, and research funding to universities currently distributed via HEFKE, including the Higher Education Innovation Fund, HIF, which will move to Research England. Under the current arrangements, there is a teaching component of HIFE, which is funded through the teaching grant, and this will continue over this spending review period. We'll fully engage with OFS to ensure joint discussion of strategic objectives and the criteria for HIFE funding that reflect these teaching elements of knowledge exchange. Infrastructure is vital for all of this. If we're to educate people in the best possible way, if we're to do the best possible research and innovation, we need the best infrastructure. So this is a key priority for UK research and innovation. We will continue to provide significant capital funding to universities for a range of activities, including supporting large-scale infrastructure, uh, purchasing specialist equipment, and renewing and maintaining the so-called well-found laboratories. Uh, we're working hard to ensure that our ongoing investments are targeted at those areas that have the greatest potential benefit to UK research and innovation. Now, it's clearly the case that university infrastructure is frequently used to support both research and education. And wherever our joint investment in universities can benefit both research and teaching, it may be more effective and efficient for our two organizations to work together. An example of planned joint working is the important provision of shared information technology services by JISC. These services include the Janet Network, which is not only a world-leading research network for our universities, but also serves learning and teaching in higher education. And we expect to work very closely with OFS to ensure that our collective investment with JISC into JISC continues to meet the evolving needs of higher education and research. Um, UK Research and Innovation will also support the higher education research and innovation sectors in achieving a diverse and representative workforce. And we will look to collaborate with OFS in areas of joint interest with regard to equality, diversity, and inclusion. Reflecting that the student interest and the health of the research environment are closely linked. We'll work with OFS, drawing on their expertise in student recruitment, progression, retention, and attainment to enhance our understanding and approach to diversity across the whole of research and innovation careers. So we are absolutely committed to championing equality, diversity and inclusion as part of our vision to be an outstanding organisation that ensures that the UK maintains its world leading position in research and innovation. We will be a great place to work which inspires, engages and learns from its people as we heard a little earlier today. Um, and finally on the REF and the TEF, we recognise that research and teaching are closely linked in many universities and one often benefits the other. So we want to reward those institutions that apply research findings and expertise for the, for the benefit of teaching. We'll look to work closely with the OFS to ensure that REF and TEF are mutually reinforcing. So I will end as I began. Uh, we will work very closely with OFS. Uh, the government views joint working between us as vital to ensuring that the, there is continued in a strategic approach to the funding and regulation 
of the higher education system in England. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much indeed, Mark, uh, for your insights. We have a bit of time for any questions. So, Mark, if you don't mind just staying at sure. the lectern. Um, if there's anyone who would like to ask questions of, of, of Mark, or indeed of myself, about the relationship between the two organizations, please um, raise your hand. There's a hand just down here, I think. Just here in the front. I, I, should, I should say the hand is, belongs to uh, Ruth Carlson, who is our student rep on the board and on our student panel. Ruth. Hello. Um, what's the benefit to students of having your lecturers who are involved in research? Just, just the benefit of students alone. Um, well, I mean, there are two sets of benefit. I mean, firstly, uh, education is about the spirit of inquiry. And, of course, the spirit of inquiry as its strongest in research. Research is about understanding hypotheses, uh, understanding uh, uncertainty, about exploring the frontiers of knowledge. And it's important that education is about the frontiers of knowledge. It's about educating people for a world which will be different, actually. It's about educating people in how to learn. And the tools of research are absolutely vital for that. And so there's lots of evidence that if you learn in an environment where people have inquiring minds, and the people that have the most inquiring minds are the researchers, that brings lots of advantages. And frankly, there's, uh, I, I had the privilege of going to university where there was an enormous amount of research, and it was inspiring to be educated by people who were absolutely at the cutting edge of their fields, um, and in some cases, you know, had made major Nobel Prize winning, uh, winning contributions to knowledge. Thank you very much. We have a question over here. Thank you. My name is Rawdon Wilkinson. I'm uh, Deputy Pro Vice Chancellor for Education and Innovation at the University of Sussex. You ended your comments with a, a, a suggestion that OFS and UKRI would work closely together to make sure REF and TEF were mutually reinforcing. I wondered if you could elaborate on what your thoughts are on that, please. Um, well, we, ne we need to have an environment, I and mean, it goes back in a way to the last question, which is um, when you look at research excellence, we need to make sure that the assessment of that and the impacts, which are, of course, an increasing part of that framework, recognize all of the activities that academics undertake. Um, and equally, a teaching excellence framework needs to recognize when people do bring all of the additional uh, skills that come with being researchers as well. So we need to work out the devil is in the detail, and I can't tell you the detail at this stage, but it does come back to the fact that in many, though, I, you know, I freely recognize not every higher education institution is research intensive, but in those institutions that are, that bring particular features associated with education and research environment, that is acknowledged by both sides of the fence, if I can put it that way. Can I ask a, a question, Mark, which actually picks up on a discussion we were having last week? Um, there's a lot of talk about um, research-informed teaching. What are your views on teaching informed research or involving students in the research enterprise? Well, um, so, so I mean, I think one can look at that in several ways. Um, uh, in many educational programs, students conducting research is an integral part of those programs. You know, they may spend a, in some cases, almost a full year undertaking research or a shorter period if they're undergraduates. So the opportunities for students to participate in research, I think, is extremely important. Mm -hmm. Um, there is also increasingly, I think, um, around sort of citizen science more broadly, the opportunity to involve much larger populations in actually conducting research. And I think that education is actually about encouraging people to, uh, you know, seek for knowledge, but rec be sceptical, recognize uncertainty, uh, be numerate, understand statistics, understand, you know, so many of these things which are absolutely critical. Um, in a society where respect for the truth in some ways appears to be uh, diminishing in some quarters. There is that. Uh, I think we have time for one more question at the back. Um, hi, my name's Zara. I'm on the student panel as well, and I'm an officer at the University of West London. Um, I wanted to ask how you'll make sure that the research conducted will mirror the diverse student body in, the, in England, um, including all types of universities, so Russell Group, Modern University, um, 
yeah, so how you do, how will you make sure that all types of students are included in this research? Um, well, I mean, the, the first thing to say is that research is very widely distributed. Um, uh, but having said that, an important criterion for our distribution, you know, how we make judgments about what research to fund is based on the excellence of the proposal. Uh, so the taxpayer, I think, has a legitimate concern to make sure that when we spend money on research, it is spent wisely. Um, but diversity is something that's important, you know, in every area of, of, of uh, education and research and innovation. And it is a very important work stream for UK research and innovation to make sure that we don't waste any of the talent that's around. Thank you. Do we have any final questions from the audience? It's, it's oh, there's, there's, some, there's some down here. Sorry, it's me. quite difficult to see. There's some down here. Fantastic. One here. Eunice Simmons, DVC at Nottingham Trent. Uh, just interested whether you envisage some joint funding of research into what high quality teaching is across the diversity of the sector? Uh, that's a really good question. Um, uh, uh, there's the whole role of actually uh, having evidence-based education. Um, and that clearly is uh, a domain in which the research councils, um, the ESRC, for example, uh, is able to fund uh, research. Um, and uh, we need evidence-based education as much as we need evidence-based health and everything else. So yes, that's an important area of activity. Thank you very much indeed, Mark. And I hope it's apparent from what we have both said that there is an absolute commitment and desire to work uh, collaboratively and constructively. And we are hugely grateful, Mark, for you finding the time to join us today. Thank you very much. Thank you.